Well, good morning. My name is Pastor Nate, and I want to welcome all of you, whether you're joining us online right now or whether you're gathered here on the Summit campus. Uh, we are kicking off a new series here today called Building Character. And over the next few weeks, we're going to take a look at some of the unique ways that, that God shapes our, our character, the ways that He wants to, to help us lay a foundation that will not only be good for us, but for our families and for the ones that we love. And today, as we kick off this series, we're going to talk about the virtue of honor, how significant honor can be, what that can mean for families, and, and what that can mean for you in your faith. And so, as we celebrate Mother's Day weekend here today, I just want to take a moment to be able to honor all of our Summit moms and all of those of you just like me where our mothers may be across the miles. And for some of you, your, your mom may already be in heaven or gone before you. Let's just take a moment here right now to be able to honor all of our moms. Thank you. It is not easy to pour into the next generation's times where you might wonder if it's making a difference. But I just want to honor you and let you know that, that in ways you may not even realize or get to see at the time, God is working through you. Uh, this weekend, I also specifically want to honor my mom. And uh, mom, I know you will be joining us at some point later this morning or maybe this afternoon uh, as you work at your church out in California, as you jump online. I, I just want to say thank you to you for your, for your faith. Uh, for your courage through the years and the ways that you and dad have uh, helped to model and lead for our family, uh, what it means to, to walk by faith. And, and for those of you who don't know my story uh, here at Summit, um, you might be fairly new, this might be your first time here. Um, I was born here in the U.S., grew up here for a while, but my parents made the decision when I was eight years old, um, we moved over to West Africa. My parents were in their late 40s, and my dad became a, a Bible translator, and my parents left behind their jobs here in the United States, everything they knew, and in their late 40s, decided to learn a new language and begin a whole new adventure overseas. And it was incredible as the years go by for me to just honor and, and respect more and more um, the faith that it took for my parents to embrace that at that season in their life. But as they went over there to Liberia, uh, we got to see in that time there the ways that they made a difference. And, and in fact, I had the chance to be able to see how my parents were honored um, in 2020, just a few years ago, because the Bible translation work that had begun in, in earnest back in the 1980s um, had continued for about a decade, and then a civil war hit that put that project on hold for an extended period of years. And, and recently, uh, that project was picked back up, was completed, and, and so my parents were not able to travel over there, but they were hosting the dedication to present the New Testament for the very first time in that local language among the Gola people over in the country of Liberia. And so my family, because my parents couldn't travel, my family, my wife, my kids, had the privilege and the honor of going to represent my parents over in that place. In fact, here's a, a picture of us on that trip. It was in 2020, right before COVID hit. And we were over there. This is in the village where I grew up. And my wife uh, and my kids got the chance to be able to see all the the different places where I had grown up and lived in that season of my life. And it was incredible, though, to be able to see the way that that town, when we showed back up there, the way that they honored the legacy of my parents. Now, in that culture, more so than in, in our Western culture, Eastern cultures tend to be more, uh, more centered around this idea of honor and how important that is for families and how important that is in, in culture. And so, for instance, growing up over there, if you were um, someone that was beyond a certain age, if you were considered an elder in the town, men and women of a certain age were automatically given honor in a very significant way where I grew up more so than what you'll see here in the United States. 
what I saw over there was that if, if somebody was elected to a position of authority, there was a lot of honor that was bestowed upon that role and, and the role that they played for a village or for that community. Uh, if someone came as a guest to the town or to your home, there was a lot of honor that was given. Even if you might not know them exceptionally well, it was considered the honorable thing to do to recognize their presence. And so we had the chance after walking around town and, and going to see the, the place where I grew up, they gathered us in the little town hall kind of area and honored my parents by honoring us that day. And you can see in this picture here, some of the gifts that they, they brought, they made speeches, talked about what my parents had done through the years, how it impacted some of their families personally as they reflected back, you know, 20, 25 years earlier. Uh, they presented, because my wife uh, was, as my wife and I were there, they presented my wife a, a traditional African dress uh, to honor her, uh, since my, my parents were not able to be there. You can see down below, you can see the sugar cane, the, the bananas, the papayas, the coconuts, the rice, all these gifts that they came as a show of honor and respect to our family. And there was one more that's not in the picture. It was the chicken. And the chicken is a great gift. And my daughter, Rachel, who is a lover of animals, got to hold the chicken for a while that day. And Rachel just thought the chicken was fantastic. We decided we would not try to take the chicken with us in our carry-on back to the United States. So we ended up giving the chicken to our driver uh, for him to be able to take home to his family. We actually asked Rachel later on, said, Rachel, uh, if we had had the chicken for dinner, would you have been really sad? And, and she said, oh no, I love chicken. <laughs> But all of these gifts that were given were given to honor and respect not only our family returning, but also to honor my parents for their ministry and for what they did through the years. Now, here's where I want to jump into scripture here today is I want to jump into some of the unique ways that Jesus was shown honor, but also a specific case where, where that was not given to him. If you've got your Bibles, open them up to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6, as you walk through the early chapters in Mark, you will see fast and furious ways that Jesus is teaching, healing people, having spiritual power encounters. He is casting out demons. He's doing all these incredible things. And people noticed the miracles that he performed and, and were amazed. They heard his teaching and were, and were in awe. There was a moment where Jesus was in the middle of a boat in a storm on a lake and he just spoke the word and instantly the whole sea in the storm became calm. And even his disciples said, who is this that, that even the wind and the seas obey him? Shortly after that time, after all that came to pass, Jesus traveled to his hometown. And let me pick that up for you here. It says, Jesus left there and went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? And then you see quickly here that the people in his hometown did not know what to do with Jesus. He said, isn't this the carpenter? Like that was his dad's business. We saw him working as a carpenter too. Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they say it with me, and they took offense at him. They took offense at Jesus. They were, in that moment, not impressed by, not moved by respect, and not moved to honor Jesus why? Because they could not get past the assumptions they already had in their head. They basically found themselves saying, who do you think you are? Look, we've seen you. You're the kid who grew up around here because he was born in Bethlehem, but he was raised in Nazareth. It's like, we know your family. Like, how dare you come and like talk to us and, and uh, to, to act like you've got something to be able to say. And and what happened there is that uh, in verse 4, it goes on that Jesus said to them there that day, he said, a prophet 
is not without honor except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. And Jesus reflected that this was true, not just for him, but this was true for, for many prophets going back into the Old Testament, that many prophets would come and, and people sometimes would receive them well, but there are many times where prophets were overlooked and who do you think you are and, and why should we even listen to you? And, and in that day, what, what you'll see here is, is that this, this idea of respect that is given, that a that a prophet is without honor in his hometown, um, that, that word therefore without honor means to, to treat something as common or as ordinary. It is the Greek word atimos. And, and it basically means, to treat something without honor means that it's just, it's, it's no big deal. Time, the Greek word there, that, that when you treat something with honor, it means that when you look at that thing, it could be a thing, it could be a person, that when you treat something with honor, you hold it in very high esteem. You hold that as, as something that is special. You treat it, as the Bible talks about this, basically that that thing is valuable. Um, so honor and value are very, very closely tied together. Uh, for instance, just as you think about sports memorabilia and that kind of stuff, if uh, some of you might have a assigned baseball or basketball or something that is kicking around in your house someplace, but it's NBA playoff basketball right now. So I just want you to imagine, let's say that back through the years that you had the chance to be able to see Michael Jordan play, or maybe you had somebody else in your family that got a signed Michael Jordan ball. That ball will probably not be thrown out into the garage or in the back of a closet, right? especially if it's personalized to you, that ball is probably gonna sit on a shelf. It will be held with high esteem. It will be set aside. It will be recognized that there's something unique about this. And, and what Jesus found there that day, I'm gonna to jump to verses five and six. What Jesus found there that day is that he could not do any miracles there in his hometown, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And it says, he was amazed, say it with me, at their lack of faith. He was amazed at their lack of faith. And, and the way that that was displayed is that there was a lack of honor that was extended to him. They did not believe he was anything special. They believed that, that he was ordinary and common and, and didn't need to be listened to at all. Here's what's interesting for me as you think about, about how how we are drawn, the places, think about people in your life where you tend to give honor. Oftentimes it is closely connected with respect. Um, but I want you to think about it from this perspective that, that while in our world here today, especially we live in a time right now where, where our world is so skeptical, skeptical of institutions, skeptical of authorities, skeptical of people. Um, we live in a time right now where it is almost what's common is to withhold honor. And it's like, unless I really respect you and unless you deserve it, there is no way that I'm gonna honor you. But I think for us as God's people and as God teaches us about this, there is something profound about being quicker to honor in our families and in the world around us than is common right now. In fact, think about it from this perspective. You might find this helpful, that respect is earned, but honor is given. Can you say that with me? Respect is earned, but honor is given. Respect oftentimes is something that, that you earn, it's earned. You earn it from other people, other people earn it from you. But honor is one of those unique things based upon who someone is, the role that they are in, to be able to give honor to somebody else is an incredible gift and something there that, that often opens the door for God to work both in their life and in yours. And it can be helpful, especially if you find yourself maybe at a time where you, you say, man, I have a hard time respecting, why would I even honor that person but, but Jesus teaches us, and he shows us, in fact, that, that he led the way with honor in ways that were uncommon. 
Uh, Jesus showed honor in so many unexpected ways. And as you go back into the culture of their day, for instance, Jesus was one of those who, among men and women in that day, um, women were were almost held as second-class citizens in the Roman Empire and among the, the Jewish nation there at that time. It was a patriarchal society. And, and Jesus, though, elevated the status of women. He showed honor to women in ways that were very unexpected in his time. Um, Jesus invited women to, to be his disciples. He spent time with them. He taught them. He sat down with them in ways that other Pharisees and other, uh, other rabbis of his day would not have taken the time to, to do. Uh, Jesus also showed honor to, to people in, in the society at that time. He knew his mission was to come and to seek and save those who were lost, people who were far from God. But he would often do that by showing honor to someone that, that maybe had a checkered past. Somebody like a tax collector that, that notoriously was known for taking advantage of people, and Jesus would show honor to this person, or, or someone that had been caught in, in sin or had made some mistakes in their past. Jesus would start from a place of, of honor. Why? Because, again, the Bible connects honor with value. Jesus saw value in those people, and, and so the religious leaders of the day, for instance, around Jesus would often say, like, why are you showing honor? Jesus, you shouldn't even be with those people. Jesus, why would you take time? Like, they don't deserve your respect. They've done nothing to earn your respect. Look, they've messed up. They have not, they've not done all the things that they should be doing. Jesus, why would you show them that kind of honor? And, and again, I love the fact that our Savior Jesus led the way with honor for many people because he saw value in them, saw hope for their future, wanted them to experience more of God in their life, even though, honestly, many of them had done nothing to deserve the respect that they were given. And in fact, even when Jesus went to the cross, the, the heart of the gospel says this, that Jesus, as God, came into our world. He had every right to be honored, but yet he humbled himself. Jesus had every right to be honored, but yet he took the form of a servant. And Jesus, by going to the cross, by laying down his life, he did for you and me something we could never do. He died in our place. And it is scandalous to even think about how, how God would give his life, how Jesus would take that step. He said, even before, while we were still sinners, that he chose to die for us. And it's one of those ways that, that God said, by leading the way with honor for my creation and for the people that I brought into this world, man, I hope that, that honor will change the dynamic, will help to draw people to me, and will change how this world works. So, with a Savior that has shown us honor that you and I have not deserved in so many ways in our lives, uh, let's take a look at a few of the specific ways that God's Word teaches us some people or some groups that, that, that God calls us to honor. So who does God call us to honor? The, the first there that is laid out in the Ten Commandments is that God calls us to honor, say it with me, our parents. God calls us to honor our parents, our, our mothers, and our fathers. In, in fact, I love the fact that in the Ten Commandments laid out, foundational for the people of God, ways that, that God says, this will be so good if you walk in my ways. One of those commandments that he gave early on uh, was this, and Ephesians 6 pointed back from the New Testament and said, to honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with, say it with me, a promise. So honor your father and mother so that it may go well with you and so that you may enjoy long life on the earth. I love the fact that God says, look, this is a commandment. This is important. I want you to take this seriously. But God attaches a promise to this one so that he says, as you honor your, your parents, it is not only good for them, say it with me, it is also good for you. There is a, there's a blessing for families and for people that when parents are honored, that is a, 
something that it not only honors them, but it also honors God. And so this weekend, I would encourage you to, to look for some of those ways that you might honor um, your, your mother, ways that you might pick up a phone and make a call if you have the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, if you've got moms that are, are here locally to be able to to be able to spend time with them, to be able to bring a gift. Everybody's wired differently, but to figure out, like, what can I do that would be honoring, that would show honor to, to my mother or to a mother in my, my life? For my wife Liz this afternoon, we're going to hang out with kids, and we've got a couple that are home from college, and just throwing some steaks on the grill and having some time together as a family will fill her cup. And... And I was talking with somebody yesterday. You know, some of you might say, my mom's not even here anymore. Um, I talked to somebody yesterday that actually took the step a number of years ago to be able to, to write something to, um, to his parents. And his dad actually was already gone at the time, but he wrote a letter, I believe, to both of his parents and, and sent those to his mom to be able to say, mom, I want you to know what you mean to me and honor you, and, and, and I want to do this for dad as well, even though he's no longer with us. And you know what happened the next time that he drove out there and, and he went back home to be able to see his mom who lived in a different part of the country? When he walked in, he immediately noticed on the wall that she had framed the letter and hung on the wall the, the letter that he had written to his dad that was no longer there. Never underestimate the, the touches, the things that you do that can honor parents. Because sometimes, I mean, let's be honest, for some of you, it might be even difficult to be able to honor a parent because maybe your childhood was not all that great. Maybe you've had a strained relationship with a parent through the years, and I encourage you to hang on to this thing to say that, that while respect is earned, maybe there's not a lot of respect or a lot of loyalty or maybe not a lot of closeness. Maybe there's an estrangement here right now, but, but there be, can be some ways that you honor that person, both in terms of how you think about them, maybe even how you talk about them with other people. And, and I'm so grateful for the work that moms do in so many ways. I talked with somebody here just a couple of weekends ago that had been a stay-at-home mom for a number of years. She started a full-time job about a year ago, and I had asked her how it was going, and she said, it's really rewarding, it's been great, but I'm really excited, it's gonna go to part-time, we're gonna shift my role, it's gonna go to part-time here fairly soon. And I said to her, I said, do you ever feel, as I talk with, with other moms, I said, do you ever feel sometimes that, that while you were at home with kids that you felt this tension, or maybe you had friends that commented sometimes, like, why don't you work? And, and don't you feel like that would be important? And, and while you're working, that you might have some that will cheer for you, but do you ever feel sometimes the, the, the challenge of what it's like not to be able to be around there for your kids or to pick them up after school or to be around at the same times? And she said, yes. She said, yes. She said, sometimes I feel like it's hard to be able to win no matter what you do. Moms, I want you to know we love you and we are cheering for you. And some of you may be home with kids right now. Some of you might be working multiple jobs to be able to support and raise your kids. We are praying for you and we want you to win. Um, the next group of people the Bible talks about where there's significance in how we honor them is those in authority. Um, those who are in authority over us, and, and specifically the Bible does talk about those who are in authority in government, those that might be in military, those that might be in the police, those that are in elected positions, and those that, that hold authority over us in our lives. And, and I definitely want you to hang on to that phrase that respect is earned, but honor is given, because we live in a time right now especially politically speaking, where our country is so divided, yes? And would you agree that, that it just feels like even in the last number of years or in this last generation here right now where, where probably honor is a few steps lower than it used to be when it comes to governments and it comes to institutions? And, and yet God holds up for us this idea there that honoring those in authority is a good thing 
Uh, and I believe that the church, as we live in a time where our world and our culture is super skeptical and, and almost starts from this baseline there that if I don't respect you, I don't give a rip what you think, I don't give a rip about who you are, um, there's something profoundly important about how we still, even if you totally disagree with somebody, and I believe the church can lead the way in this, that, that even if you, dis, you disagree, would never vote for somebody, won't vote for them the next time, um, ways that, that while we may not respect and we're not gonna agree with their policies and, and the decisions that they are making, there is something that God says about granting authority to those who, who carry positions of leadership in the world around us. Romans chapter 13 says it this way. It says, give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If, you, if revenue, then revenue. If you owe somebody as part of business or an obligation you've made, if respect, then respect. And if honor, say it with me, then honor. And, and this is why I believe elsewhere the, the Bible speaks to the idea how significant it is for us is you think about how do I honor those? Because it can be really hard when you disagree with someone and you really don't like how they are leading or think they, they might be uh, incredibly negative or destructive. Um, the Bible says one of the ways that we get to honor is we get to pray. To pray for those who are in authority and those who are in leadership. And I wanna remind you, where did, where did Paul write these words? Paul wrote these words to the Roman church and and when you think about the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire was not very friendly to Christians. The Roman Empire, they were not known, Nero and others were not known for being godly, wonderful leaders. And yet, and yet even in that context, Paul said, there is something about how you honor your leaders, and he actually says the same thing is true, that, that when you honor leaders, it is not only good for them, and pray for God to work in their lives, that's not only good for them. God says it is also, say it with me, it's also good for you. That, that as we honor, it's beneficial for those that have been placed into positions of authority and for us. The third is this, that God says that, that we're called to honor our spiritual leaders. And all three of these parents, positions of authority in the world around us and also those in authority within the, the church and within God's family. All of these, you can see how honor is attached to those that are placed over us in, in different ways. Those that have been entrusted with some responsibility. Again, may from a parent to a government leader, even sometimes in the church, may, be, may exercise that authority well or may not, but but among God's people, there is something important about how we build a culture of honor, what that can mean for your family, what that can mean in, in your faith. And for spiritual leaders, the Bible talks about how those uh, that are entrusted with positions of responsibility like shepherding and pastoring and evangelists and apostles and, and those who, who carry out roles of spiritual authority in a variety of different ways are are worthy of, of respect to be able to encourage them in their work. And 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17 says this, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. And I say this not to just be able to call out and say, hey, what does that mean for people like like Ryan or Nick or me, who play a very public role here with our church. But as I think about all the different ways that people have embraced spiritual responsibility and, and leadership here in our church, I think about all of our, our small group leaders, sometimes men or women, sometimes couples, that have not only taken the step to be able to open their home up, to be able to welcome people, to connect, open their lives to others, but but also feel a sense of, of calling to help other people grow in their faith, to help walk alongside of them, sometimes to be the front line when care is needed, and also to be someone who is praying for and thinking, how do I help the people that I know take steps in their faith? I think about those who, 
who have committed themselves to be able to, to serve with our kids and with our student ministries and, and play a role in helping to encourage the faith of the next generation. What a cool thing. And, and for us to be able to honor those that have stepped into those places where, where they are volunteering and they are serving. I think about our staff and our team that serves in so many incredible ways uh, around this ministry. So many of our lay leaders in this church, um, among God's people, he said, there is something that is profound about how you honor those that have taken on that kind of responsibility. And and that honor is not only good for them, and Paul teaches this the same way, it is also good for you as you honor your spiritual leaders that this is benefit for you as well. You see, the truth is this, that God builds our, our character when we take the path of honor. And God invites us to, to experience this journey, to be able to experience the significance of honor not just in terms of what he calls us to do with others, but to, but to experience the ways that he pours out honor into our lives, the way that we are honored by our Savior, we are honored by our Heavenly Father, the way that, that, that God has honored us. And you want to find the, a foundation, like how do, you, how do you learn and how do we live that out to be able to honor someone maybe when it's hard in a family relationship? When, it, when maybe it's, uh, honestly, they have not earned your respect, how do you still honor someone? How do you honor someone that, that you disagree with in, in authority over you? How do you honor those who, who are in spiritual leadership? You know, this next week, actually, in this series, we've got an incredible opportunity to be able to, to honor someone. Um, his name is Colonel Tolliver. He's an uh, African-American Air Force pilot, retired now, trained actually back in the 60s under one of the original Tuskegee Airmen, and has such a decorated career of serving our country, but he also has an incredible faith story, something that God did in his life, actually as he was flying as a pilot in the skies right over Phoenix here, um, that you've got to hear. And that will be someone next week where it is both easy to honor and easy to respect this military leader and what he has done for our nation and, and how he has walked by faith with God in that journey. But God calls all of us to walk this journey of honor. And especially when it is hard or it is challenging um, in life, it might be honoring somebody else. It might be something totally different. Psalm 50 verse 15 says it this way. It says, call upon me, God says, in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, say it with me, and you will honor me. You will honor me. And, and God says, and we get to experience, even though that we don't deserve it, when we call upon God in trouble, when we call upon God in, in times where we need his forgiveness, we know humbly, God, I, I've messed up and I need you to show up and, and make things right in my life. We get to, to honor God as he shows up and as he does that. And one of the greatest ways we get to honor God is by honoring other people because other people, the Bible again connects the idea of honor with value. And when Jesus sees the world, he sees value in every single person, even those who treat him badly. And it's why in Romans chapter 12, I love this passage here. It says to love one another with brotherly affection. Say the next line with me, outdo one another in showing honor. Isn't that a cool line? To outdo one another. What if among the church, God built this kind of character in us that the world would say, man, why do you guys honor people the way that you do? In fact, to be able to outdo one another in, in honor I believe that if today you did this for moms and tomorrow you said, I wanna, I wanna outdo my spouse in showing honor to them. I wanna outdo my kids in showing, instead of like demanding their loyalty and their respect as a parent, what if I went out of my way to be able to honor my kids and the way that I talked about them and the words that I used? What if, if families and an entire family, I believe that a month from now, 
if you went on this journey here of saying, let's try and outdo each other in showing honor, there would be love and loyalty in your family in some incredible ways a month from now. But it all goes back to, to how you see value in those around you. I was reading a story this, this past week of, of a baseball, the baseball bat that, that Babe Ruth used to hit the very first home run in Yankee Stadium. And, and before he hit that home run, he had actually been out in Los Angeles, and as they were doing youth development and sports and stuff, many years ago, back then in the 1920s, somebody asked him, said, babe, you're moving into a new stadium. Would you be willing to give the bat that you used to hit your very first home run in Yankee Stadium to, uh, to a kid out here, somebody that like wins in this competition we're doing out in LA? And he's like, sure, I'll do that. And so he, he wrote a note on this bat, personalized it, and sent it to this kid out in California. How do you think that kid treated that bat in the years to come? What a cool gift. He actually held onto it for 61 years. And at the end of his life, he had a, a caregiver, a nurse, someone that was taking care of him. And to honor her, he, uh, he gave her a number of things at the end of his life, and one of the things that he gave to her was the Babe Ruth bat from Yankee Stadium, the first home run ever hit there. The challenge was this, she had no idea what she had in her hands. And you know where that bat ended up? She tossed it under her bed, and it sat there for the next 18 years. And she just thought, you know, this is kind of a cool, it's a, all right, it's a, some sort of commemorative bat, but didn't realize it was personally signed or anything special. And finally, some of her kids, her family, some other people that, that years later realized she had this, they encouraged her to, to finally get this thing vetted, figure out what it was actually worth. They put it on auction after 18 years of her having it, after 61 years of the other guy having it. And in 2004, you want to know what that bat sold for? $1.3 million. It makes a difference whose name is on that bat, doesn't it? Here's what I want you to realize. Moms, even if you don't feel that valuable, you have the name of God that is written on your hearts. You are made in the image of God, and you are valuable to Him. In fact, all of you, men and women, you were created in the image of God. And, and let's never forget the significance of what that means, how God sees you, and how we see other people. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you.